CBS Atlanta News presents Public Affairs on Peach. Good Sunday morning to everyone. I'm Brandon Rudat. The government's two biggest trust funds are now running dry. The latest projections confirm that both Social Security and Medicare will run out of money within the next couple of decades, and that is a lot of seniors out there very worried. Barbara Broadleaf depends on both Social Security and Medicare to make ends meet. Well, I use it to live on. My family helps me out. And Social Security really picks up the difference. So she's paying close attention to the latest warning from the Obama administration that the programs will run out of money within the next 20 years. Protecting Social Security and Medicare is one of the most significant challenges we face today as a nation and is a challenge we can and must meet. The annual report for the two funds says Social Security will be depleted in 2033. And at that point, there will only be enough incoming money to pay seniors about three quarters of their benefits, a prospect that worries future retirees. You're kind of looking forward to this and then not knowing if that's going to be there, it, it does bother. It is a concern. As for Medicare, the hospital trust is now expected to run dry in 2026. The Obama administration says savings from health care reform have helped but that more work is needed to avoid a cut in benefits. It's our duty to keep Medicare strong and sustainable so that our children can look forward to the same security when it comes time for them to retire. Medicare and Social Security provide benefits to 58 million Americans. And with 10,000 people becoming eligible each day, the pressure is on Washington to keep those programs afloat. All right, so if there's no Social Security and no Medicare, what's that going to be like for the next generation? Joining me now to talk about what we need to be doing right now to help prepare for retirement, Gary Berger. Gary's a professional finance expert from Tax Retirement Advisory Services. All right, Gary, what do we need to be doing now? We hear so much stuff in the news out there. There's going to be no more Social Security. There's going to be no more Medicare when we, sure. when we retire. What should folks who are in the workforce, workforce right now be doing to prepare for such a crisis? Well, number one, Brandon, what people should be doing is they should be planning. They should be seeking out the help of a professional like a certified financial planner, and they need to go in and see them, and they need to develop an, a game plan and a plan to uh, be able to uh, rely on and be able to come back to and have it uh, in a situation where they're going to be able to track their progress and be able to uh, see what else is out there for them to be able to reach their goals. Is it false hope for people to rely on Social Security to be there sure. and, and to live on when they retire? I don't think so. I think it would be political suicide to not have some Social Security benefits. Seeing as how we're all paying into it now? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of people term that a Ponzi scheme, but I wouldn't go that far. I think that we're going to see some Social Security in some way, shape, form, or fashion. But for folks uh, like the late boomers and the Generation Xers, you're going to see probably reduced benefits. You and I were talking earlier, you're going to probably see delayed benefits. Uh, full retirement age is going to be bumped back because you have so many people that are going to be pulling out of the system. And we are living longer, right? That, absolutely. That's another factor. So when you retire, that money needs to last a longer amount of time. The other part of that is, is Medicare. Medicare is part of the Social Security program. Medicare is a health insurance program. Do you know any 60, 70-year-olds that aren't having health issues as they age? They all do. They all do, so that's another drain. And we've got 70 million people retiring in the next 20 years in that baby boom generation. All right, your advice to somebody right now who's a Gen Xer, they're in the workforce right now, and you advise them, listen, we've got to come up with a different kind of game plan here so you're not solely relying on Social Security to be there in two decades when you retire. What's the first thing you advise somebody like that to do? Well, number one, a Gen Xer is probably going to be contributing to a retirement plan. Right. Uh, Pensions need, are gone, by the way. That's Pensions are a day, they're, they're no longer around. Absolutely. In the 70s, they created defined contribution plans. We don't have defined benefit plans right. or pensions anymore. So what a person should be doing that has a defined contribution plan is trying to max out their contributions in that retirement plan. There are also other strategies that can create tax-free income later on down the road because the other unknown in this equation is what are tax rates going to be when the Gen Xers retire, right? right? So there's a lot of strategies that you can employ uh, uh, that will uh, give you the advantage 
of being able to pull money out tax-free later on. And, and just so people know, if I'm contributing to my 401k as part of my retirement plan, am I going to, I'm not getting taxed on it now, correct, when it's going into my 401k, but I will be taxed on it when I take it out, correct? That's exactly and right. And that tax rate is going to be whatever the current tax rate That's is. That's exactly right. That's very important to understand. Uh, we have an analogy that we use with our clients. Would you rather pay taxes on the seed or the harvest? A Roth IRA allows you to put money aside that has already been taxed, but as it grows, if tax rates rise, and that's a, that's a probable uh, certainty, so to speak, right. that later on tax rates are going to be at a higher rate, would you rather pull it out and pay tax on the harvest tax-free later on? And that's what a Roth IRA allows you to do. There are other products out there and other strategies that you can employ that will do the same thing. The catch-22 to this, right, is that if I'm going to contribute to a Roth IRA, and, I, you know, I, that's my paycheck comes to me, sure. right? My paycheck comes to me, and then I'm going to sit there and say, all right, I'm going to set aside, let's just say, $500 a month. Well, now it's $500 a month after taxes have already been taken out and I'm putting it into my, my Roth IRA. That may not be the same amount as that I can contribute pre-tax. That's right. So there's not as much money that's able to be grown right, right in that account. Right. There's kind of a, it's a catch-22 a bit, isn't it? A little bit I'm of that. I'm not putting as much money into my Roth IRA that I can immediately put into, you know, my that's exactly 401k. right. Well, these are the catches with all the plans that right. they allow us to have is the, the contribution limits. Some people can't make a contribution to a Roth because of their income. They're phased out, so to speak. And, and that is usually what, how much income do you usually have to be phased out from a, from a Roth? Well, it depends on if you file jointly or singly. I'm not a CPA. I have a right, CPA business right. partner. But a lot of people, the, the limits are really low. Right, very I, low. So a lot of people can't even contribute to a Roth. But if you feel like later on down the road that tax rates are going to be higher and you're going to anticipate being in the 35, 40, you know, back in the 60s and the 70s, tax rates got as high as 90 percent. We had a lot more deductions, but things go in cycles, inflationary pressures, taxes. Right. We're probably going back to higher rates. If you feel like you're going to pull the money out at a higher rate, it might make sense to be able to pull it out tax-free. So many questions uh, with all of this. And, and you know, the fear is, especially for seniors out there sure. or people who are about to retire, and then, you know, we're seeing the squabbles in Congress about sure. privatizing Social Security and doing these sorts of things. You know, people just want the basics, right? They want to be able to say, I live in this house now, and when I retire, I want to remain living in this sure. house. Right. Right. That's exactly right, and they want to be able to maintain their standard of living that they've gotten used to during their working years and live out their remaining years uh, safe and happy. Is it too late? And I know your, your answer is going to be to this, but I think some people are like, gosh, if I start, you know, I wasn't responsible in my, in my 20s or my sure. 30s. I'm in my late 30s. I'm in my 40s now. Is it too late to contribute to my 401k? And can it really see a difference? Absolutely it can, and no, it is not too late. And one of the best strategies that anyone can employ is a strategy called dollar cost averaging. And that's what a 401k allows you to do. It's setting aside systematic sums of money out of your paycheck, investing in mutual funds, for example. Right. There are other investment vehicles, but mutual funds. As those mutual funds turn down in price and we go through the inevitable volatility in the stock market, you're actually buying more shares at a cheaper price. So when it does come up, that dollar You're cost averaging, money. exactly. The dollar cost aver averaging is working uh, to your advantage. Gary Berger, thank you so much for your insight here this morning. We could You're talk welcome. this stuff all day long. Absolutely.